Have you ever heard the term supernatural? You know why it's called supernatural? I know sometimes we've attached all kinds of weird stuff to that, especially around October. But you know why it's supernatural? Because it's beyond the natural. It's, it's more than we can see in our metaphysical world. It's something that only God can do. And you know, God can do what only God can do. Do you believe that? When you come to prayer with God, you are coming to uh, the ruler of the universe. You are coming to the, the one who can change anything. If he has to do it in a supernatural way, he will. It's supernatural to have the sea stand up on both sides and the people to walk through on, on dry land. Isn't that supernatural? It's supernatural for an axe head to float on water. Uh, it's supernatural uh, for a man who has been put into the tomb to come back alive and live a life and then die again. But boy, it's really supernatural for when a man has been condemned to die and he dies on a cross. And three days later, he comes back to life. That's supernatural. Amen? Our God can do supernatural stuff. Do you believe that? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our coming to you. You are the one who loved us through Jesus and, and called us to be your sons. Uh, and you are in a position to do whatever you choose in answer to our prayers. He goes on to say, how we need to realign our priorities to God. He says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. His kingdom, not mine. His church, not mine. His glory, not mine. Are we willing to realign our priorities to God? Abraham Lincoln said, I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for the day. He says, I need God's wisdom. I need God's leading. I need His direction. Your will be done. On earth as it already is done in heaven. You know it is done in heaven, right? There's, there's no angels there to argue with God about what to do. Uh, they were cast out a long time ago. <laughs> there's only God's will done in heaven. And when it's done on earth, it is the very best thing possible. So we pray that God's will be done. And when we pray that, we are praying that individually. We are committing our lives individually to having God's will done. We are submitting ourselves to His will. We are realigning our priorities and we're submitting our will, His will on earth and in my life. You know, prayer is really surrender. Surrender to the will of God and cooperation with that will. And that's hard to do in today's world, isn't it? I'm a self-made man. That may not be so good. <laughs> <laughs> because when I make me, I don't, I don't really do a real good job. Wouldn't it be better if I'm a God-made man? If I'm a godly man, you're a godly man or godly woman. That's much better. Submitting our will to God's will. Letting God have His will done uh, on earth, uh, in our lives. Then uh, we also request a blessing. It says, uh, Jesus says, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, you know, really, Martin Luther says, pray as if everything depends on God. He says some more after that, too. <laughs> pray as if everything depends on God. Because ultimately it does, doesn't it? Well, here's the rest of his quote. Then work as if everything depends on you. <laughs> God expects us to participate in it. You may sit at home and just pray that God would feed you. Well, God may want you to go out and get a job so you can earn money <laughs> so that God can give you the blessing of food uh, through the life that you live for His honor. Amen? Uh, pray as if everything depends on God, because it does. And work then along with your prayers. Uh, to have God give you 
your daily bread. And then he goes on to say uh, to how we are to forgive us of our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Here's a, re a confession of sin. Forgive us of our sins and help us to do the same with other people. You know, you want to live a good life. Don't harbor any resentment. Don't harbor any hatred. Don't harbor any sense of, of revenge. Give it all to God. No matter how much it hurt, give it back to Him. Just let Him handle it for you. You have been given far mo forgiven far more than what someone has done to you. Right? Aren't we all sinners? Anybody here not a sinner? Our young man that answered, yeah, <laughs> the last time I answered that question, he doesn't happen to be here today, so <laughs> I guess it's kind of universal that we are all sinners. We've all fallen short of the, the glory of God. We've all committed sin against our God. We have been given, forgiven much, haven't we? We have been forgiven of all of our sins through Jesus Christ. Now shouldn't we pass that on to other people? And forgive other people like he's forgiven us. When Robert Louis Stevenson was a boy, he remarked to his mother, Mama, you can't be good without praying. And Mama said, well, how do you know that, Robert? He said, because I've tried. <laughs> well, it just makes sense, doesn't it? You can't be good without God's help. Honestly, as a Christian, you can't be good without God's help. God gives you the power to live your life for Him. So we need to daily confess our sins and ask for His guidance. And, and that last part is a plea for strength. It says, And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lead us not into temptation. Protect us uh, from falling back into sin. You know, really, we need to ask God every day to keep us out of those temptations that we would fall into and to strengthen us to be able to live our lives so that we can be better tomorrow than we were today. Amen? We can be better today than we were yesterday because we've turned to God and asked Him for His help. That's how important prayer is. Prayer covers every aspect of our life and if we're not spending time in prayer we're missing the opportunities that God has for us to be empowered, uh, to, be, to be clear and, and, and free from guilt. We're missing all kinds of opportunities to be used by Him to bless others. When we pray, we get in touch with our loving hot Father. We get in touch with our loving God. And He speaks to our hearts. And He leads us and He guides us. Would you bow with me please in prayer? Father, I thank You for this opportunity we have to be reminded of the necessity of daily communication with You. Lord, I pray that You would put it in our heart to pray to You in all circumstances, in every case, Father. That You would give us the wisdom and the courage to turn to you, to love you, and to receive from you, Lord, the answer that you have designed for us. Father, thank you for sometimes telling us no in our prayers. Lord, thank you, Lord, for sometimes telling us wait in our prayers, because you know the perfect time. Father, thank you for the many yeses that you have given to us in our prayers. Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless us. That you would continue to hear us. Lord, that you would continue to reward us. Not as in the sight of others, but Lord, in your sight. So that we may see your will done on earth. That you may receive the glory for all that you do in your church and in your church people in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.